Yo, this is Christian and today I'm gonna tell you how to uh, beat your competition and land your first web dev job. Okay, um, this is kind of an epic video that I wanna make and I'm sure you're gonna get a lot of valuable information out of it and a lot of insights and a different perspective into the whole uh, landing your first dev job kind of thing, okay? So the first thing that I wanna touch on here is that everything starts with your portfolio. The way your portfolio looks and the way your portfolio is being built. Why is this important? And I feel like a lot of self-taught developers and a lot of bootcamp grads can't seem to understand this, okay? Landing your dev job, your first dev job, is um, it's a lot about the product that you are selling, which is your, your skill set, and it's a lot about marketing, okay? So you need to be, besides a developer, you need to be a good marketer, okay? You need to know how to market your skill set. And before you even start that, you need to have a good product, okay? A product that you wanna sell, which is your skill set. And the way that you prove that you have that skill set is by building a portfolio, okay? That's gonna be the proof that you know uh, what people want from you, okay? What most people fail to understand is the fact that you are a huge gamble for a company, okay? Even when they wanna hire an experienced professional, a company is still gambling, okay? I bet, I put a bet that this person that I'm gonna hire right now is gonna bring a lot of value to my company, so we're gonna make more money than we are actually paying this person, okay? So there is like a bet. Okay, if you are hiring someone with five years experience, the chances of you making a good bet are way, way higher. Okay, and the same for the software developer. For the software developer, there is a bet where, hey, I'm risking my safety here at this company where I'm actually working at right now, and I'm betting that this next company is going to be better. I'm going to stay there longer. I'm going to like the culture. I'm going to like the the, the amount of workload that I have, it's not gonna be too much. I'm gonna like the technologies that I'm working with, etc., etc. okay? So it's a bet from both sides. But for you as a junior developer, when a company is betting on you, they are literally spending, let's say, 10,000 bucks on Dogecoin three years ago and whenever it was released. Like no one knew that Dogecoin is gonna go so high up, okay? No one had a clue about that. So it's a huge risk. That's how you are for a, for an existing company. And for you, right, it's a lottery ticket. For you, it's like a lottery ticket. If you get in, your whole life is gonna be changed, right? You're gonna make six figures. You can make up to like, I've, I've been watching this podcast about how much money people in tech are making and some people are making half a million a year, okay? Obviously, probably not with front-end web dev, but once you become a developer, you can upskill, you can get mentors, you can get courses, you can get programs, you can learn more stuff and you can get into Apple or Google or whatever. You can learn a different skill and you can make more money, okay? So front-end is like a, like a, the first barrier, you know, like how marijuana is the entry-level drug for the other ones, you know, something like that. Why am I talking about drugs? Anyway, so to prove that you are the right bet for a company to take, okay, and to crush your competition, you have to have a good portfolio. And I'm talking about competition because if someone is putting out a, a job out there, there will be like 100 people that are gonna apply for that job. And it's gonna be you, little Jimmy, with your to-do app that you just made in your bootcamp or you just copied from your Udemy tutorial. And then it's this guy or girl that has five, 10 years of experience working at XYZ company and they have the proof there, okay? So you have to kind of have the, the, the right product and you have to be really good in order to beat the other competition, okay? Because the company that's looking to hire, maybe they like you, they like your personality, okay? And they are willing to save maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand on a hire and give you that position, okay? So that's how it works. Now, the next thing after this is thinking about how can you make your portfolio product, right? The first thing that you wanna do is you want to give the recruiter a chance to see your application live running, okay? Most people, they just put their code on GitHub and they are hoping that the recruiter is gonna clone the repo, install the uh, node modules, and then start the application for some weird reason. Some other people are deploying their applications on Heroku and it takes one minute till the application starts running. You don't have one minute. The recruiter is gonna think that once you, you are unaware of this thing. This thing might be a bug, okay? Then the next thing that I see is that people are putting a login screen for an application. Like, why would a recruiter go through the sign-up process for your application? Like, there is no reason. 
I know you've been taught that, but put, you need to be empathetic with the other people that are in the hiring process, okay? The first one, the first gatekeeper is the recruiter. And you need to make it as easy for the recruiter to work with your application and you have to make it obvious for the recruiter that you are good okay and by being good i mean having a real product okay yeah, your application has to look good i see many 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 times people that have applications that look like they're made in 2002 okay it doesn't matter how complex your app is if it doesn't look good because you're a front-end developer the way your application looks like is very very important Okay, so your application has to look good and forget the login screen. Don't push stuff on Heroku, never do that and deploy your application, okay? So these are the first thing that's, things that you wanna do. Now, to differentiate yourself even more, because these are like quick things that you can do. To differentiate yourself even more, once you get the interview, right? And then you go to the first stage, let's say, after the phone screening, what's gonna happen is you're gonna give your um, GitHub account to your, um, to the developer that's gonna look at your resume and stuff like that. And what you wanna have in there is you wanna have a project that you've been working on for a few months, okay? Maybe three months, maybe four months. I've been talking about this for a long time. The developer is gonna understand by looking at your code, by looking at your application that you've put a lot of time and effort into this and that's gonna differentiate you even more. Now, they'll also look at the way you are using Git, okay? Most people just push to master or to main or however it's called right now. And they're just pushing to main all the time and they are using Git and GitHub like Dropbox, but you need to learn how to use branches. Then once you learn how to use branches, you need to have code reviews. This is very important. It's part of the software uh, development life, life cycle, I guess, however you want to call it. It's something normal that you'd be doing at work. You've seen most of my students or my clients that were talking about this. When they get the job, they'll actually go into the same process. So the faster you can mimic this process in your learning, the easier it's going to be for you to land that first dev job, okay? Because they, they will see that you don't need to be taught as much. You'll be... Probably you'll notice that a lot of bootcamp grads and self-taught developers that are vocal about how much they are learning after they get their first job. Obviously, you learn a lot, but they're also missing out on this thing like Git. They don't know how to use Git properly because they haven't been working with someone that's above them. They just work by themselves. Okay, and that's pretty bad. What else is important? So you need the code reviews to make sure, sure that your code is clean to make sure that you are defining and constructing your application in the right way. We talked about working on an application for a long, long time. What else is important? Now, once you have all these things done and you have a cool app, a cool app that you wanna present yourself with, you need to learn how to get rejections, okay? Most people have very, very thin skin and they just can't take rejections. And after a two, three rejections or they're just completely gone. They, they have like very weak hearts. But rejections are pretty good because you can learn from them. If you have someone to tell you what's wrong, like for example, I had one of my students which is gonna be in a testimonial soon. Uh, I didn't do any interview prep with him and he was getting like a bunch of no's. And then I started asking him questions and I figured out, okay, he has a problem with the delivery of this thing. He doesn't know this, he doesn't know this. So we practiced that for like two, three weeks and he got the job that's paying him six figures, okay? So you need to understand what those rejections mean. And you need to get some sort of different perspective than what you know, because if you would already know what you don't know, then you'll be where you wanna be, but you don't know exactly what these guys and girls are looking for when they're interviewing you, you know? So you need a different perspective so you can understand that. And once you fix these things, you'll understand that this was so easy. Like, Getting this first dev job, it was so easy compared with literally anything else that you'll be doing in the future, okay? Right now, it seems like a huge mountain that you have to climb and you don't even have shoes uh, on your feet and you have to climb this huge mountain. But once you get there, you'll see that it wasn't that bad. It was just a matter of getting the right skills, building the product, going out there and applying for jobs and uh, networking with people, I guess, but that's not even that important in my opinion. Well, applying for jobs and understanding why you are getting rejections because so many people are spending years right in this tutorial purgatory which it's not even about making tutorials but they don't know exactly what to do right you see that guy that's in the gym for like 10 years and it's looking exactly the same why because they don't have a system they don't have a framework they don't have a personal trainer like if i would go to the gym for 10 years and i would look exactly the same i would definitely get a personal trainer and that's what i did pretty much and now i'm starting to put on some muscle because i understand that if I would be the fit guy, the fitness guy, you know, with big muscles, then I would not have that problem. But I'm not that guy. 
I'm the skinny fat dude, so I need to get a guy that's jacked to teach me how to get jacked as well. Otherwise, I'm just wasting my time and I don't really have time because I'm a human, okay? We are, we are dying. We don't have time to waste. So that's why I did what I did. So I hope this video is helpful for you. If you got any insights, leave a comment in the comment section. If you liked it, like it and uh, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, hit the notification bell. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.